There's been a shooting there, ma'am. The victim who has been shot is Melissa Howard. I went into the front foyer and I turned the light on. What did you see once there was better light? My mom lying there. She was strong. She was just magic. She was magic. But you're having an affair with this dead woman that you discover, is that right? Yes. Melissa Howard told everyone that if I if she got killed that her husband did it. So you've been to her house before? Yes. Oh, he says uh, they got some new DNA technology. They have your DNA in multiple places on her body. So this is the sweatshirt, and you can see it has quite a bit of blood on it. I think they thought they had the perfect plan. I think they thought they had the perfect execution. You're giving me something. Um, I'm, not, I'm not just doing it out of the goodness of my heart. I mean, people that do stuff out of the goodness of heart don't kill people. So we took a couple weeks off. <sighs> I mean, vacation, traveling. Back to school. Filming, back to school. Radio. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Lord. Y'all. It's been a hell of a couple of weeks. It has been. Just getting back in the swing of things, you know, like yes. traffic patterns and people getting up earlier and yes. people on different roads and school zones and, oh, I don't miss being in school. Not for a second. I liked like elementary, middle, high school, like for the friend, you know, aspect of it. But other than that, man. Mm -mm. I'd rather work and pay my own bills. Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. Although I am a, I am a, and I feel like you're like this too. Um, like we're always learning. Yeah, you, I, well, I'm always in the pursuit of mm -hmm. learning, but just it's just cool. Yeah, the, the, structure of it and the confinement of mm -hmm. it is like you know what i saw it was like on social media it was a picture of like a school cafeteria and a picture of a jail cafeteria mm -hmm. and it's kind of like kind of sad yeah have you ever read into that like the theories behind it mm -hmm. yeah a little bit with that post so i was it's like pretty is, fascinating it really is because it's <clears throat> similar in it's kinda, too many ways kind of true they but did just reopen. They uh, opened a new jail here. Did you hear about that? No. Mm -hmm. Our sheriff did it. Really? Yeah. It's like called the Hamilton County, what, whatever they call it, Department of Corrections, Corrections or something yeah. like that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well. All right. Should we get into it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a Florida case because we just got back from Florida and <clears throat> thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a great time. As always. As always. <laughs> Uh, Melissa was a 33-year-old blonde bombshell. She was so pretty. She was living in Crestview, Florida. She was Missy to her friends. She was petite. She was athletic, a good mother, and she was working as an RN in a local hospital. Now, Missy had three children. She had two older daughters from a previous relationship, and she had a younger son named Taylor. Oh, Taylor. Mm -hmm. She was in the midst of this really nasty custody battle with her soon-to-be ex-husband, Brian Howard. Now, on January 6, 2006, Melissa was, was found dead at her home at 22, no, 222 Tiffet Court. It would take 13 years to solve the murder of Melissa Howard. That's just 13 crazy. 13 years. Yeah, especially... 13 years, especially it being in 2006, mm -hmm. you know. I ran in, and she got into the house, and Melissa's dead on the living room floor. Okay, she's unconscious, she's not talking to you, anything? No, there's blood everywhere. Okay, is she breathing? Can you get a pulse of any kind? I haven't even touched her, no ma'am. I didn't want to mess with nothing. She's been murdered. Mm -hmm. So, as in all cases, the poli police turn their attention to the people closest to Missy, her boyfriend, Christopher Cadenhead, and Missy's 15-year-old daughter, Carrie, were the ones that found her body. That's awful. Mm -hmm. Investigators started looking at the people around her at the time of her death. Police took Christopher's FedEx truck into custody as evidence. 
They found nothing that would suggest that he had anything to do with it. Her daughter's boyfriend was also vetted by the police. That is interesting. I wonder how old he was. They were in their teen years. Well, so. she was 15. So Not maybe. saying he couldn't have been 18, but yeah. I'm like, where were his parents? Oh, yeah. Where were if his he parents? wasn't 18. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm assuming he was probably 18. Yeah. Or they were like, he didn't do have anything to do with this, so talk to him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, her boyfriend was even vetted by the police. Law enforcement then started looking into the ex-husband, Brian. Melissa was killed just two days before the courts were going to rule in Brian and Melissa's custody arrangement. Brian had an airtight alibi. He was with family and his son, Taylor, at a Mexican restaurant. He even called Melissa that night to return Taylor home, but she never answered the phone, and Taylor ended up staying the night at his dad's house. Mm -hmm. He was, like, seen on camera. Yep. Receipts. Receipts. Multiple eyewitnesses. Had the son. It really was an airtight alibi. Yeah. But you always got to look at that spouse, man. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that they even entertained other people Mm -hmm. before, Mm -hmm. like even the boyfriend. I mean... He had an alibi, right? Mm hmm. It is fishy, though, that it was just two days before the judge was going to make a decision on. Very fishy. Yeah. Mm. Melissa had been in very close contact with her lawyer, Janice Burke, for months before her death. She almost, like, considered Janice as, like, a friend. Like, yeah. Girl, girl, this is what happened now. Like, yep. Blo- you know, everything that's going on. She yeah, confided she- in her. Yep. Janice recalls how terrified Melissa was and how anxious she had been about this whole custody arrangement set, you know, getting it all set up. Melissa told Janice, if I'm ever killed, Brian did it. She told many people that, including her friends and her family, and they took her words to the police after her death. The police took a closer look at Brian and his friendship with these two brothers, the Holbrook brothers, Michael and Russell Holbrook. They were bad news in the community, but great friends with Brian. The police got a warrant to tap Holbrook's phone conversations. And I was just saying I was with you to protect you from your wealth. Well, they're, tr- they're trying to say you and I planned it, right? Premeditated. So then they get to his principal and get me his capital. They had what they needed to bring charges against Russell Holbrook. Now he says... Uh, they got some new DNA technology. He showed me a paper saying they have your they have your DNA in multiple places on her body, and that um, I I have put my stuff with you. But right. he showed me yeah he had a paper about it. You're one in thirty nine million. Your DNA was all over her body. Um, yada yada yada. I mean that doesn't even make sense. I mean, it don't make sense, and that's what I told him. It didn't make sense to me. And Michael seemed upset the detectives thought he was part of the crime. And I, I kept saying, well, what the, what the all this got to do with me? And he just kept saying, well, you know, we got you on video with him at Walmart, so you was there too. And, and like, last time they came, they said they reenacted the, reenacted the, 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 cr- the crime scene and all that shit, and, it had to have been two people, and I t- he told me, he said, um, you know, we just wanted to give you this one last chance, you know, to give a statement. And I was like, well, look, man, you done called me a liar last time. I said, <laughs> I, I, I've done give you three fucking recorded statements. You tell me I'm lying, so you want me to give you a fourth one, and you're just going to tell me I'm lying again. And leaked evidence to the press to put pressure on the brothers, which is a tactic that police yes. use sometimes. Yep. So, And it is okay to do so. Yeah. Um, uh, Russell denied ever meeting Missy, but the phone tap has him admitting to going to 222 Tiffert Court on January 4th, 2006. So that was two days before her murder. He admitted he went to her house to scare her for his friend Brian in the, in the, in the tapes. That's not verbatim, but Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we got out of it. Missy ended up calling her lawyer right after the visit from the brother, and she was scared to death. She told her what had happened right after the encounter. So she called her lawyer immediately to figure out 
what is going on. People are so stupid. I know. Okay. And she called me that Wednesday night and she was scared out of her mind. Very upset. Hysterical to the point where she almost couldn't speak. Because I asked her, I said, who was it? And she said, David Russell Holbrook. He said to her that she needed to um, let that boy be with his father. I guess the word would be menacing because she was a, she was a small person. She was petite and the friend of the former husband, Mr. Holbrook, who came by, he's a large man. And she was there alone. She was afraid. I had suggested that she call law enforcement that evening. But honestly, I didn't follow up to see if she did. I went to her house and talked to her. Went to um, Missy's house? Yeah. So, you're, and I, so you've been to her house before? Yes. So, I, I, I mean, then it's possible that your DNA is in her house. Yeah, but it wouldn't have been all over her. No, of course not. Let's <laughs> get over there and get me a piece. But. Yeah, I wish. So in the early 2000s, which this was in 2006, DNA technology wasn't as advanced as it is now. The technology at that point could not separate two separate people's DNA from one another. So you just had a whole load of DNA and the more whoever's DNA there was more of is the um, dominant what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, so eventually technology advanced and then investigators found that Russell Holbrook's DNA was on the blood-soaked sweatshirt that Missy was wearing when she was murdered. So her death was really violent. And after all these years, it was one of those things where they're like, there's no way, the way her she was killed, there's no way who did this, their DNA is not here. Mm -hmm. So obviously they're going to go back and test the DNA and do all the things different or what they couldn't do back then. Um, there was also evidence that Brian and Russell had made a pact to kill each other's wives. It was a one in 39 million chance that Russell had murdered Missy, but also he has a brother and sibling or familial DNA can make things weird mm -hmm. too. Very weird. Yeah. Um, and just, should we go into the details of her murder? It was, like, really bad. Yeah. So she was, um, a knife was used. It was so violent that the knife messed up, effed up, penetrated her vertebrae. That's crazy. Do you That's know how much force? Awful. Oh. And seeing her sweatshirt that many years later in the courtroom. Yes. Th I mean, it took 13 oh, years. It, oh, gosh. I just, oh, my gosh. But could you imagine being her daughter and finding mm -hmm. her? Like, oh, my God. So what happened once the door was opened? Um. It's okay, ma'am. Take your time. Um, once we were able to open the door, I went into the front foyer and I turned the light on. What did you see once there was better light? My mom lying there. Also, the crime scene was like very clean. Like, no prints, no nothing. So, at, even at the very beginning, like, they really thought that this was, like, a professional hit. hit. Which is crazy that someone, like, what do you do for a living? I'm, I'm a, a professional hit man. hitman. Like. Yeah. I mean, I know they don't say that, but, like, what? I wonder how many people are. Are. I'd say probably more than you think. Probably, and that's kind of scary to me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, <sighs> please, no one hire a hitman for me, because <laughs> I don't know what I would do. That's so crazy. 
like we said, it would take 13 years for Missy's case to get to trial. Missy's lifestyle was put on the stand. That's how they do it. There's no point in uh, victim blaming on it for any reason. There's no reason for it. Um, Holbrook's lawyer brought up the fact that she was married and dating a married man, her boyfriend, Christopher. How long had you been seeing Melissa Howard before she died? Right at three months. Exactly three months, I believe. He said he had come to her house around 11.15 that night. What did you see when you went inside? Uh, at first, it took a minute for my eyes to adjust. And uh, when my eyes did adjust, I could see Melissa lying on the floor. Did anyone call 911? I did. There's blood everywhere. Is she breathing? Can you get a pulse of any kind? I haven't even touched her, no ma'am. I didn't want to mess with nothing. She's been murdered. Uh, they painted her as like a pot stir, someone who's always like trying to... <clears throat> drama. Drink, yeah, drama queen, who just wanted to take her son Taylor away from his father. Taylor would actually take the stand, and to think of him as a six-year-old boy in 2006... Was he not... Was he 10? Oh, yes, he was 10. He was 10. Yeah. He was 10 years old, just this little boy, and yeah. then when he's on the stand, he's like this grown 23 man. 23 years. Yes. Old. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, Taylor would take the stand and describe what his last encounter with his mom was. Can I say, too, um, over the course of these 13 years, Taylor lived with his dad. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? Taylor Howard, Melissa Howard's son. Taylor recalled his last hours with his mother. We played some board games, and uh, she wound up taking me to a dinner with my dad and his side of the family, and um, that was the last time I seen her. The board game later found scattered on the floor in front of his mother's body. When your mom dropped you off, can you just describe how that exchange went? Uh, very emotional. She was very upset. Um, I knew something was off that night. Um, uh, my dad and her, my dad stayed in his vehicle and they exchanged words across the parking lot. Um, I didn't want to leave her. She was really upset. And also, in case we didn't clarify it, um, Russell is the one that is on trial mm -hmm. at this. Um, he's the one that's being charged and convicted, or hopefully convicted. Um, how, like, I wonder how Taylor felt about, number one, having to take the stand having to hear all these things they're saying about his mom mm -hmm. that he probably has heard from other people since um since she died but like you also lived with your dad for those 13 years after this happened like what is that i wonder what his feelings were through yeah. all of this like was he God, I just want to get this over with and just go back to my life because, you know, me and my dad actually have a great relationship and blah, blah, You know, like, yeah. I wonder what he, he... He had to have been, like, pulled in two different, three different, several different directions. Yep, yep. Because I know he would, you know, he had sisters. Mm hmm So his sisters were probably advocating for his mom's justice. Mm hmm Then he has his dad who he has a relationship with and it's... Who is his caregiver. Him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so I read something the other day, too, when you are feeling pulled in different directions by other people and their motives and narratives, only go in your, the direction that's for you. Yeah. Like, it's, at that point, when it's internal, because people have made it internal, mm -hmm. don't go in any direction for them. You just go in your own direction. Yeah. Because it's just a part of uh, peace protection, you know? Yeah. It, it, it kind of, it doesn't make it go away, but it helps alleviate some of the guilt that you might feel or yeah. the concern for maybe feeling like you don't want to have to go against this person just to go, like you're not choosing it, don't choose anyone's side, yeah. just choose your side. Yeah. And usually that could be translated to just like be in your truth. Yeah. So I find it interesting that you just said that because I literally read something. That's good. That, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good I thought quote. so too. I was like screenshot <laughs> yeah, mind, yeah mind opening yeah 
Crazy. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so they were just painting her as, you know, not this great person. He did take the stand. Um, he said that that day that they had been playing a board game. Uh, then at around dinner time, she drove him about a mile up the road to meet his dad at the Mexican restaurant. And Taylor remembers his mom being very emotional and upset, like she didn't really want him to go, but she knew that she, she had, had to, to let him go. And, and he didn't want to leave her either, though. No. Like, I he wanted he, to stay with her. Yeah. You know, when your mom's upset, when yeah. you're a little kid, you're like, no, I don't, if right. this is going to make her not upset, then I want to stay Right, with or her. I just want to make sure she's okay. Yeah. 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 He just wasn't really, he didn't really want to go, but of course he did. Jurors were also shown a surveillance tape from Walmart from that night showing the Holbrook brothers right around the time Missy's body was being discovered by her boyfriend and daughter. Russell was seen looking at his hands and realized that there were blood on him. Like, you can just see it clear as day. Like, he's, like, checking yep. himself out. Literally, just in, making sure. In Walmart. So, the jury at this point, and after, you know, both cases were heard, they didn't need hardly any time to deliberate and knowing that Russell's DNA was the one that was found all over her body and home. So again, early technology, they could just pick up her DNA. Mm -hmm. Every part of his DNA was mixed with hers. They knew there was other DNA, but they couldn't get a profile for it. With the new technology and how it was when the trial happened, they were able to separate it and it was his DNA. They were also a new investigator or detective um, was able to analyze all the crime scene photos and realize that um, maybe just a couple things that weren't brought up or thought of back then, but like the way that everything happened, the investigator was able to determine that she was attacked from behind. So when they re-examined the DNA from the sweatshirt, It was like the perfect storm because that's how she was like, no, if we're going to find DNA, it's going to be on the back of her sweatshirt because Mm -hmm. she was attacked from behind. So that's also a big reason that they were able to get his DNA. DNA. Um, So Christopher Russell Holbrook was charged with first degree premeditated murder in 2019, and he was sentenced to life in prison at the Florida Department of Corrections. We, the jury, find as follows as to the offense charge in the indictment. Guilty of first degree premeditated murder as charged in the indictment. So say we all this 27th day of February 2019. He really showed no emotions that I could see. Uh, I believe that he thought he beat it up until the time the jury said he was guilty court is prepared at this time to enter sentence consistent with the law of the state of Florida. The sentence is as follows. David Russell Holbrook would be sentenced, will be sentenced to life in prison in the state of Florida Department of Corrections. So I'm just sitting here looking up um, Brian Howard. And that name is quite common. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to figure out if if he was charged? Yes. He might have taken a deal. You know? Yeah. But I honestly I don't know. I also wonder if Taylor and his dad have if if his dad's not in prison. I wonder if they have any sort of relationship. You know, I know that would be hard. That would be that would be very difficult. Do you remember what the dad looks like? Is this him? Um seems a little old, but he's 49 in this Yeah, picture. and it's 2024 now, so yeah. he wouldn't look the same as everything that we've read and looked at. I, I kind of say this if it's not him though. Hold on. I'm going to look something up, too. Um, well, you can say it. You just don't have to. We could just. We don't know if it's the same person. <laughs> like, I think it is. 
I so think I it is too. I found an article from 2019 uh, from Fort Walton Beach that he was arrested for battery, a touch, or a strike. And then in 2022, it looks like he was charged with aggravated stalking, accessing an electronic device without authority, and the use of a two-way communication device to facilitate a felony. He logged into his girlfriend's social media accounts against her will and threatened to kill her and her family. So he is Yeah. Yeah, that sounds... Sounds like him. It does, actually, unfortunately. So he was never charged. Not with her murder. Not with Melissa's murder. And three months after the verdict, detectives got a new lead. So, Ms. Howard, what brings you here? Um, I'm scared that my husband's going to kill me. <laughs> okay. And your husband is? Brian Howard. Brian Howard's frightened wife, Jordan Victoria Howard, showed up at the sheriff's office, and FDLE agent Megan Palumbo was brought in to help lead the questioning. We know what happened in 2006, so we don't want that to happen to you. Okay, and we can't undo that, but we can try to fix this. So you're just afraid? I, I why, know, why? I, I know that he killed Melissa. I know that he did that. How do you, I know that he'll do that to whoa, me. Whoa, whoa, yeah. how do you know that? Because I know. Well, all right, you're making a comment. How do you know? Because he told me. Claiming her husband had arranged for someone else to do it. He didn't tell me that Russell's the one that actually did it. Mm -hmm. He said some other name, I'm sure, just to cover Russell. Okay. But he told me that he hired someone to do it. Brian Howard was later arrested and convicted of a misdemeanor charge of domestic abuse. He has denied any involvement in the murder of his former wife, Melissa, and he has not been charged with any crime in that case. Nor has Michael Holbrook been charged with any crime in the case, as his brother Russell spends the rest of his life behind bars for the murder of Melissa Howard. Which is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. How? He's just not a good guy, it doesn't seem no. like. And mostly, most of the time, people that aren't really, like, there are, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of people that break the law and do bad things, but they are not bad people. Mm-hmm. This guy does not seem good, and typically people that are just not good people don't keep company of good people, mm -hmm. like... The Holbrook brothers. Mm -hmm. Um, No, I was just trying to go through some of the stuff we had uh, looked at and watched and read and stuff mm -hmm. to see if I could find a, a photo of him, like, back then mm -hmm. to compare, and I just, like... She was beautiful. She's beautiful. I mean, like, like she would work out in the morning. Beautiful. Just had it all. Oh my gosh, stunning, stunning. And her beautiful. kids are beautiful. Her kids are beautiful. Her daughters look just like her. I even think Taylor looks. I like do her too. More than his the girl. Dad. I think he like. Oh, oh yeah, I think yeah. you like just. You know when you can like see facial structure, mm. and like obviously most women or most females wear makeup and stuff like just seeing him as a young man it's like her it to me it looks he's very pretty mm -hmm. like just that they're it's striking features i was she's so pretty i was looking at your taylor yesterday and i was like jade yeah that looks like jade 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 just the way they're yeah it's almost like the way they move their face or something is yep. just so similar yeah i feel so like, like the boys look like me and Jade looks like Taylor, but Jade really looks like her Taylor's sister. Yeah. Um, Tara. She looks just, like even sometimes when she gets like the her sassy attitude, I'll be like, "Okay, Tara." Yeah. <laughs> I'll text Tara and be like, "Uh, you need to come get your daughter." Yeah. Because she's acting like you right now. That's funny. I love Tara. Shout out to Tara. She is fantastic. That was such a great vacation too. Yes. Yes. All of our friends chilling yep except for on the last day we get up to like leave and there's like four people with a stomach bug including myself and i just <sighs> remember i was like okay your mom gave me some medicine 
Yeah. And I took it and I threw it up. Oh, man. And then I was like, okay, I think that's it because there's nothing in my body at this point. Yeah. (laughs) And I go downstairs and drink water, a whole bottle of water because I'm so dehydrated. And you throw it up again. Throw it up again. Macy, come here, sis. Mm -hmm. Here's the towel. Are you okay? Like, so. I'm like, are you good? I know when I have a stomach bug or like anytime I'm just like, you know, if you eat something like food point, like if I am puking. Please. I don't need you to stand here. No. Like, I appreciate it, but no. Like. Let me. Yeah. You don't want to bring me a towel. Yes. Bring or a rag or I don't care some a napkin. Yeah. Bring me maybe a a couple sips of water, but just leave it and go on about your business. That's what you did. I'm not trying to sit here with an audience. No. No. (sighs) But it's very humbling to throw up in front of people. (laughs) That's a fact. You find out who your real friends are. Yeah. Okay, well, we have some big stuff working. We can't really say anything about it right now, but... Pray for um, our safety. Yes, <laughs> pray for our safety. Uh, pray that someone's going to listen to us. I mean, I know people are going to, but people just that the right people. Yes, important positions. Because mm-hmm. there's a case very close to our hearts, uh, close to where we live. Very. And it just seems it's just written with injustice so. yeah and oh. it's a very large undertaking i feel like this is going to be our next like multi-episode yeah over a significant period of time yeah because it's but, a big one but we may not even get to do it until later right and we'll let you know about that because so. we're definitely not trying to get in the way of any new no things or investigations no. or whatever but um it's very important yes so it's big so Make sure you're following us on all of our social medias, the Ad Expired Podcast, Ad Expired Podcast Chat, and Ad Expired Podcast 423. You can find us on YouTube every Monday at 3 p.m. and everywhere you download podcasts at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, my gosh. What? We were nominated for People's oh. Choice Award for True Crime Podcast. That's so great. <laughs> I, I thought... People could vote, but it's ju- it's a it's like they like have a, a poll of people, poll of, like a jury almost. Basically, right? like all the listeners, they like send this thing out that's like, "Do you want to be a voter?" So then the people that agree to it have to go like listen to things mm-hmm. and like really truly like pick their best. So it's not just like a full blown popularity contest, right? Or like how many followers you have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like legit. Yeah, and we are so excited. We're s- <laughs> that's so epic. Like. A People's Choice Award. I know. Uh, we're going to have to make room on our thing for for a People's Choice Award. Or even a nomination trophy. I'm fine with that. But it would be great to win. But brand new. Love this. Shout yeah. out Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Welcome. Let's talk about serial killers. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, I love that. Okay, I'm going to start off our little end thing different, but okay. the same. Okay, right. if you have a pet, please hug them and love them because mm-hmm. I am now petless. You're petless. First time in how many years? Ever? Yeah, kind of. Clyde passed away last week. Yeah. That was part of the reason we took a couple weeks off, just to be sad. And then it was my birthday. And it was your birthday. And the kids went back to school Mm -hmm. all at the same time. Yep. And this was, like, and vacation all within two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's been crazy. But, Mm -hmm. um, no. Uh, Yes, very sad that Clyde is gone. I miss him dearly. But... Uh, good news is that what happened happened out of nowhere. He didn't suffer for a second. And, and he was loved. Yes, and he had his best day ever before shit hit the fan. Yeah. Like, I kind of, th- it was like he, a he, happenstance thing. Yeah. It was like, okay, done everything I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I ain't going to do this anymore, whatever. That's but, a good, positive way to look at yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, hug your pets. Yeah, hug your pets, and um, if you're going to be an asshole, please be a funny one. And keep your pistol in your pants. <laughs> Don't do mad. Don't do mad. God. Don't murder people. Oh, and please take care of each other. Yes, take care of each other. This is the Expert Podcast. Bye.